Hi, this is Tyler Woods. You're listening to KMKRLP 99.9 FM Tucson. And guess what? That's right. Welcome to Music Matters. Hi, this is Tyler Woods. You're listening to KMKRLP 99.9 FM Tucson. And this is Music Matters. And today I am sitting with... George Howard. George Howard. And um, I can't tell you how many people have asked me since I started this show, have you talked to George Howard? Have you talked to George Howard? (laughs) And I finally decided to IM you and say, hey, are you interested? And you said... Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's great. People, your name is out. Why is your name so out there, George? Oh, I guess I've just been around for a while. Can't I won't go away, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Could it, does it have anything to do with the Tucson Musicians Museum? Yes, that and the love of music and growing up, uh, you know, being able to listen to the music scene here in Tucson for a long time was very inspirational. How long were you in Tucson? Have you been in Tucson? Uh, since 1972. Wow, okay. So a semi-transplant. Yeah, I, I grew up in the southwest, basically south of the border. Okay. And then I came to college in Tucson and... Uh, Started playing music, uh, you know, in college. Okay. Yeah. U of A? Uh, yes, U of A and Pima. Oh, Pima's a great college. Yeah. You know, I don't think kids will ever understand that. Go to Pima first and then transfer. Right, you right, know? right, Gosh, right. Gosh, that's, that's a whole topic in itself. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so what did you play? You said you're a musician? I'm a drummer and a vocalist. Okay. What kind of music? Uh, I played blues probably the majority of my life. I toured with blues musicians and um, had a few blues bands here in Tucson. Uh, was uh, part of starting the Blues Society, uh, but decided to go towards more booking with my friend Terry Glassman at the time, way back in the day of uh, Terry and Zeke's. So, um, I remember that. So yeah. a lot of those blues people that came... Um, through Tucson on the way to like Texas or you know another stop or kind of like a gas stop uh, stopped at Terry's and played. We I mean, had some great people that played there you know Otis Rush, Coco Taylor, Albert Collins, Robert Cray. Yeah. You know? Jeez you're right. Yeah so yeah. it was uh, and, and a lot of them were friends of mine that, that I'd met through the years or played with at one time or another. So you're in Tucson, and you're playing drums, and you're doing some vocals, and all of a sudden, what happened? How did this Tucson Musicians Museum get started, I mean? Well, I was, uh, it's funny, I was actually at the point of, you know, not playing for a while, because I just lost my mom, and I was taking care of my dad, so I actually stopped playing music for, for about three years to take care of him, and then I figured, you know what? I'm just going to concentrate on my photography because that's what my main job is. And, um, you know, a couple signs popped up and said, you're not ready to quit yet. I got, I was lucky enough to get a few accolades here in Tucson, which I felt very honored to have gotten. And, but I thought there were other people that were a little bit more deserving. So um, I figured, you know, spread a little bit more awareness in the community of people that have been out there longer than I have that I remember growing up watching, um, you know, should be recognized. So that was one of the reasons why I started the Tucson Musicians Museum as well as um, getting together a mentorship program for our youth so our members could be uh, mentors to these young kids. Nothing better than a professional to teach them than a regular teacher who's been through the, you know, the ringer. Yeah. So that was that was another reason, uh, education, and um, you know, just showcase our kids and, 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 and these people from time to time. Where do you find these kids at? Uh, we're working with some st- uh, students from TUSD. There's uh, private sector, you know, private teachers, as well as uh, some of the charter schools. So, you know, any kid that, that's looking for help, uh, we want to be there to help them. Okay. And so then you have the Tucson Musicians Museum. You're, you're trying to 
Tell me a little bit more about that. Is it more than just mentoring kids? Yes, it's basically uh, education. So we're educating everybody about who the musicians are, what they're playing. Also. So do musicians kind of like get inducted into your... Yes, every okay. year we have an induction ceremony, which uh, this September 22nd at the TCC, mm -hmm. uh, the North Exhibit Hall from 7 to 9, we have our new inductees, uh, Julianne Booz, Craig Schumacher, Mike Blummer, and Gary Lamell who uh, used to be uh, president of Warner Brothers. He just passed away, but he was from Tucson. Uh, and we have our kids playing. Uh, my band will probably play in honor of one of uh, our fallen comrades, uh, Stephen Wilhite, who passed away this last year. So it's kind of like a local Grammy Awards, but it's with kids and uh, adults. Awesome. And, um, wow, I think that's such an achievement. And you're a nonprofit. Yes. So and we call it the celebration C3. of music and culture. So can people donate to you guys? Yes, you can go to our website, www.tucsonmusiciansmuseum.org, and donate there or, you know, come down to our show on the 22nd. We've got a silent auction there as well as performances, and uh, um, all the, the money's going towards our mentorship program uh, for our mentors. So... George, I, I have a curious question for you. Yeah, sure. Um, why kids? Why are you focused on kids in Tucson? Well, I believe that we owe that to them as musicians because that's our future. And it's up to us to direct them in the correct way of learning music in a fun way. Um, you know, the, the typical, you know, let's play classical music on piano and learn piano and stuff like that. I think that's kind of passe. Uh, I think we want to teach the kids, you know, the roots. You know, a tree doesn't start from the ground up. It's yeah. the roots. And the roots um, that we need to stress uh, on our kids that there's, you know, the only two true American art forms is blues and jazz. And everything came from blues. That's just a fact. And from that point on, um, you know, what we'd want to do in our, like in our curriculum is not only um, teach them that, but other cultural music. That way, let's say like, you know, they'll learn about the blues, but they're like in a jazz class, so they'll learn about jazz. But then, you know, we'll go to like Cuban music. Um, so culturally, they'll be able to like go around the world, learn cultural music, understand that culture, plus probably get the interest about learning more geographical about it since you're playing it. And uh, that way their voice is more international when they're ready to write or perform. They've got that cultural influence and diversity that they've had the opportunity to learn to make music uh, known that it's endless. You know, we, we, you know, we ask them, what do you want to, do you want to write? Do you want to perform? Um, you know, where do you, what do you have in mind that you'd like, what, to do in music the best and work with them on that right. as opposed to this is a structure this is what you do you know yeah. there's there's the basics but you know the, the young mind is very curious and it's it's important that we work yes. with it I have to my hats off to you if I had a hat on right now because you know as a psychotherapist I work with kids and uh, one thing I try to get kids to get um, to pay attention to is music and oftentimes I'm able to talk the parents into getting the kids uh, going. I, I, I love what's happening at House of Bards right now. Mm -hmm. And that is they're giving free lessons. And um, I heard that they had their first night last night and kids showed up. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the, since kids are our future and music is soul and heart, um, it's one way to really get them off the streets, um, doing something productive, and it's work. Yes. I mean, playing music is not because, you know, I mean, we enjoy, I mean, I enjoy it, but I always felt like um, I get up every day at 4.30 so I can practice for a half an hour before I start my day. Yeah. And I just think that um, teaching kids that kind of discipline, it's almost like yoga, you know? Yeah, sure. So, um, thank you for doing that and keeping our kids safe and sound because in today's world our kids need an outlet 
Yeah, and it's something that uh, we tell them, nobody will ever take it away from you. It's your sanctuary, and you, yeah. you can take it. And with the schools pulling the music out, yeah. there are several places now within Tucson where kids can get actively involved. Is there a fee for them to participate? Um, well, that's it's, you know, not really engraved right now. Because you know most of our fundraising is to to pay the mentorship through our right. program, right. but we're not you know if if it if a uh, mentor wants to do something on the side privately and he does that that's that's, that's his funny. business. But okay. we uh, you know we're there to help the community and, and the kids. Okay. Um, any problems that you've seen with this with uh, um, all this? Has there been any flaws or? Are we still creating or it's still are growing it's still growing ever changing uh, I've noticed with nonprofits it's an ever changing thing I've got in my hand if you can hear me rustling through the papers uh, George has uh, got a, a uh, what is this a catalog it's a program every it's year program. we put out a program uh, with the new inductees for uh, from the last 13 years everybody is in there and so everybody can basically have like a, a documentary history of, uh, you know, the people in Tucson that have given back to the community as well as put as much as they can into their craft. Right, right. Well, I believe I believe that that's something that's vital for music. And plus, I think it's like karmic. You know, what we give, um, what we learn, we can give out, and then that comes back to us tenfold. Well, that's what music is. is, too. It's to share. It is Bottom to share. line, we're just all messengers, and we're keeping our message alive through um, playing music, making people happy. You know, if, you, if we're lucky enough to teach somebody that w wants to learn about our our message, how we interpret that, that's that's even better. But um, there's nothing there's nothing stronger than the message of music because it's international and it's soulful it's so it's 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 food for the soul it's food for the soul and it speaks every language yes, I think I mean, it does. there is no language barrier with music no there so, isn't good good so you said that, that uh, your band's gonna be playing yes what's your band's name George Howard band the George Howard band yeah I've got a few I've got a Zydeco band called dr. Mojo and the Zydeco cannibals that's a great and, name. And <laughs> uh, that's my Zydeco band. And, and then I've got the, uh, uh, the uh, Motown and Soul Review. It's a 10-piece band, and uh, it's a tribute to Motown. I've got three female vocalists and a horn section on that band. and it, So it's kind of like a show. Wow. We, we do, like, mo uh, you know, the Four Tops and Temptations. They do Supremes and, and Fontella Bass and stuff like that. And then towards the end, we all sing together. And it's a fun show. I have to tell you a fun story. I was at La Paloma one day, and I was working with some uh, develop me, developmentally disabled kids. Mm -hmm. um, we had a program at La Paloma, and uh, we took the, um, the staff elevator, and we got in there. There was three of my Down syndrome kids, and we get in there, and, you know, I look up, and there's three black guys looking at me and I'm like oh, crap what's going on and they looked at me and they looked at the kids and they said um, what's going on and I go oh we work here so we're allowed to be in this elevator and and all of a sudden they started singing to the kids <laughs> it was the four tops oh it really was three of the four tops <laughs> nice. and I didn't realize that I kept looking and I kept thinking I know these guys are in music or something, you know, because yeah. they're at La Paloma in the staff elevator, and they didn't look like employees. Yeah. <laughs> nicest, nicest people I ever met. Yeah. And they broke out in harmony, and I can now say that in an elevator, the four top sang to us. So nice. It's nice. a great, it's a great memory. Yeah. It was years and years ago, like a long time ago, but maybe thirty years ago. What but a great experience! It was awesome. They yeah. were so kind, and they shook my hand and all their hands, and yeah. they were incredible. So, and that's the power of music. Yeah. You know, because one of my kids were acting out, and mm -hmm. and uh, they just. 
it was so calming for them. Yeah. To, and they, they didn't know who they were. I'm trying not to shake in my pants because I'm so excited. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was great. It was just incredible. That's and I awesome. always share that story whenever I can. Oh, yeah. Um, they were awesome. I also ran into MC Hammer and a couple other people that were very kind to the people that we worked with. And Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, most of the people that I was mentored by and around um, were the most humble. And, yes. and these are great people that, you know, people are freaking out about how great they are. But, they, you know, to them it's like I, I feel privileged that I can do this and people show up. You know, they don't take it for granted. And that's, to me, that that's somebody that I, I admire rather than somebody who thinks it's about themselves because music's never about anybody, you know. It's all here to share and, you know, we uh, all enjoy it. So I have a question for you. I'm trying to think of, I mean, this is the first time I met you. Um, and, and your energy is wonderful, by the way. I just, you oh, know, thank very you. kind man. Um, and so I'm sitting here with you thinking, how did a guy like you think of, of something like this? I mean, what, what were you doing? Did you just sit in your, like, I know for me when I started my nonprofit, I've done two nonprofits, one for suicide and working with families who lost someone to suicide. And after 21 years, I had to do something else. I've sat on some boards and, um, and then I decided I just had to do something different. And I remember sitting, I was at Monterey Court and I was talking to some friends and all of a sudden I said, I am sitting on this music board and I can't deal with it because they're dysfunctional and they admit they're dysfunctional and I must get out. I want to start a nonprofit, and this is what I'm going to do. And sitting next to me was a um, what do you a, a, a legal assistant, and she turned around and said, "I like that idea. I'll nonprofit you, and I'll do all the paperwork." And before wow. I could even change my mind, I'm signing forms and uh, turning into a nonprofit. What's your story? Well. Um you just sitting around going, ah, I'm going to no, do this. No, no, I, I, I was a photojournalist for Entertainment Magazine and a few other music oh, nice. magazines back back in the day um, after I got off the road. So uh, I would interview, um, you know, um, big concerts and, and, and local concerts. And, um, you know, looking at all the history back then, it was pretty incredible. And I thought to myself, it, it, it's it's... It'd be a shame to, to lose the history of Tucson's music scene. Mm. So uh, the publisher, Bob Zucker, actually he has three volumes out of bands in Tucson from the 50s to, I think, like the 80s. And um, I thought that, you know what? You know, th these people, they're still alive and they're still playing. This should be documented because this is... This is, is Tucson's history. Somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can get it uh, online through Tucson Musicians Museum. That list? Uh, yeah, the wow. three. There's three volumes, and it's great. <sighs> it's great. Um, so that to me, I said, you know what? We need to document. Start documenting Tucson's history right now before we lose it. And that's basically kind of what this is: is a documentation of uh, band leaders and people that have made a difference in Tucson uh, as musicians and have given back to the community. That's kind of like the, one of the most important things is, is giving back. Uh, so that, that's kind of how it happened with me because I had, all, I had compiled all these photographs of all these bands and people and, that I knew personally or I played with or, you know, we were involved in music at one way or another. And um, so that was that was one one of the ideas that I had is pre you know start preserving the history now, so later on down the road, um, and even our kids can basically see the people that set the bar um, of excellence for the rest of us to follow here in Tucson to become like number seven out of the top music cities in the United States. Can you get over that? You know, I I, I, oh. I I believe it. I mean, there's so I've much music I've lived here all here. my life. I've been performing since I was 12. I'm 61. I just am blown away that Tucson 
yeah. got that high. And I watch the music scene here, yeah. and it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And I've, I've played all over the country, and I've, I've seen, you know, um, some places that were, you know, considered really hot. But, you know, to me, I thought, hey, I've got musicians in Tucson that could, you know, or we have musicians in Tucson that, you know, are incredible that, you know, we should be considered. So, you know, we're up and coming, and it's going to get better. And uh, through having the museum, um, we hope to have more knowledge uh, to, to give to the community. We're going to be partnering up with the Arizona Historical Society. Nice. So we can get some more archival things. Uh, we're unveiling a, uh, uh, a friend of mine who's a sculptor. He's an amazing sculptor. He's got a life-size motorcycle that's basically uh, musical instruments. Oh, nice. Yeah, so oh. that's going to be part of the... So we're going to be directing, uh, decorating a little bit more of the museum. Uh, we induct people every year and, um, you know, have this fundraiser. And we c we'll continue to have more fundraisers for, for the museum and for our mentorship program as time progresses as well. George, one of the things I do, and one of the reasons why I wanted the show so bad, was um, I really believe in supporting local music and being that Tucson's my hometown and um, whatnot. Um, I love doing this, and I love with every guest to ask this question. What advice would you give to young musicians and regular musicians that are um, aging? Enjoy it. Embrace it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we're all into it for enjoying and embracing. Um, but I mean, you know, like getting really into it you know I mean don't be afraid to step out of what your norm your comfort is. zone yeah be be willing to be diverse and open-minded to other music and uh, approaches of, of music I mean for me uh, I think one of the most amazing things that ever happened to me is when I had the opportunity uh, when I was writing for uh, um, one of the entertainment magazines here in in uh, in, in Tucson, uh, I got sent over to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival to, care, to copy, the, you know, cover that for a, a couple of days, actually for about three days, and it was phenomenal. Uh, that was in 1982, and I'm still going. I think I've maybe missed nine. It's like going to the wall. I mean, there's music that you're only going to see in New Orleans, musicians that are incredible. Uh, all types of music there and I tell every musician that I know at one time in your life even if it's not the jazz fest there's stuff going on but it is it is the music city in the United States nothing beats New Orleans New Orleans I can't imagine and, and it's uh, the food's amazing the music is incredible the musicians are very friendly okay. uh, and uh, the Jazz Fest is like 3,000 bands in two weeks. Oh my gosh, you're yeah. kidding. No, it's it's oh. incredible. They have uh, on the fairgrounds, in, which is uh, inside this racetrack, 10 stages. And every 45 minutes from 11 in the morning till 7 at night, a different band goes on each stage. So, they, they you know, there's a tent. It's just for gospel. One that's just jazz. One's blues. And the music doesn't intertwine. No, you know? no, oh, that's no. great. It's like three hundred fifty thousand people out there. Oh my god! It's gosh. like another city, but it's like something you can't. It's tough to explain. You, I mean, just being there, all that music to to take in and and hear is just. If you're a musician, it's just like yeah. Just listening to it leaves me speechless. It's yeah, like, oh it's, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. You it almost be a spiritual experience. Well, that's you know that that's what I look at it as. Yeah. You know, um, because I, every time I go there, I hear something new, mm. and uh, take something home with me. How many have you been to? Well, I've been going since 1982, and I've only missed like nine. So been to quite a few. Yeah. A couple decades. <laughs> couple decades. I love that. I love I'm always that. playing pretty much every when, weekend, when is so it I don't. What, what, uh, it's the last week in April and the first week in May. Oh, that's great weather. Yeah. Okay. Well, it rains sometimes, but out there it doesn't matter. They don't care, you know. I mean, the people that they have there. You've been out there since the hurricane? Yes, I have. Um, how did music survive that? Uh, 
never had an opportunity to ask. Um, about. It's it's it, it was fine, you know, mainly in the tourist areas, uh, the Garden District. It didn't get hit, hit bad. It's mainly the Ninth Ward, which is down by the levees, which is more the poor section of town. Um, I think it affected it a lot because uh, a lot of the musicians that were there got displaced to like Austin and. Um, Actually, I hosted eight of them when um, some musicians came to Tucson. They got transported here. <clears throat> so I hosted them, you know, got them hooked up with, you know, some gigs and places to stay and, and, uh, um, and you know, hearing their stories about New Orleans and how it's changed. But, yeah, there were a lot of musicians that, you know, had to leave. That It was like a big, it was a big family there. It still is, but, you know, nothing's the same when, you know, you've got half the pop, half yeah. the populations is just, you know, yeah. get out, go yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, it was a tragedy. It was horrible. It was and horrible. it's happened to me, so I, I understand. Uh, 1997, there was a 92-inch water main that broke out by uh, Greasewood and 22nd. That's the water main that brings mm -hmm. the CAP water to the reservoir. 800 yards from my house, that broke. And 480 oh million gosh. gallons went through my neighborhood. I had six feet of water go through my house. I lost 30 years of uh, um, archival photography and recordings and photos of uh, all the people I played with, you know. Uh, it, it was devastating. Uh, but, you know, I'm still here, so. Yeah, one thing I do when musicians listen to this is um, all my photographs, all my music, everything I've converted and transferred to um, MP3s and to uh, JPEGs on, on the computer. And then I put it on a hard drive, and then I have the hard drive not in my home. Yeah, a lot of this stuff yeah, this was before I got, got the computer. I know, but I know. like if you see in that corner over there, it's it's two boxes of probably 30 boxes of cassettes from the music I played from 12 to now. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And nice. I'm, I'm, those cassettes only have one play in them, and sometimes I find myself having to move them out of one box into another yeah. cassette holder that will play it one last time. Right, right. And sometimes I don't get one last play, but it's something I'm slowly work on, and it's really time-consuming. Yeah, it, it is. It is a lot of time. I wish I had the money to hire someone to I do it for me. thousands of images. Yeah, it's... Thousands. I know, I know. That's but, you know... Pain in the butt. So, um, you, to me, are an inspiration. So, oh, uh, you, you are why music matters. Um, you are what local musicians, you, your organization, your nonprofit, is something local musicians should aspire to uh, be as kind hearted and generous with your time. And um, are you in the Hall of Fame? I'm in the Tammy's Hall of Fame, the Arizona Blues are Hall of Fame. Are you in your own Hall of Fame? Uh, the Tucson Musicians Museum. Good. Yeah, I'm in that as Good, well. Because I said, don't make me abduct you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> induct you. I mean, you know, for me, you know, it's it, it's it's great to have the accolades, but um, you know, there's there's You're doing always it for that, a reason. Yeah, um, just to help out people. Yeah. Whatever I can do to bring somebody else on board that's not been recognized that yep. I feel that needs to be, um, I, if I can be an instrument to help them, and educate people about what we got here, then, you know, I've had a good day. You rock. No, oh, thank you. You rock. Um, our time's about up. Normally we play music in between, and I'll hit you up after that to see at least what you enjoy listening to. But, um, George, I can't thank you enough. A Tucson needs this. And now with us officially being the seventh uh, city in Tucson, or seventh city in the nation with the best local music, um, you're doing a great service, not only for musicians, but for Tucson. And oh, thanks. This is why I like KMKR so much, is it really is about their involvement with our community, and um, most local radio stations are that way, but I just love the fact that... Um, well, I love the fact that I got the courage to call you. <laughs> oh, and no, and you know, no after hearing George Howard four or five times, I'm like, all right, already, I'll, 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 I'll get a hold of you. 
great interview. Thank you very much. Well, thank George. you. Thank you. And, Come on uh, and hear the band sometime. I think I will. And how can people get a hold of you again, uh, your website? Um, as far as the Tucson Musicians yeah, Museum, yeah. Uh, it's www.tucsonmusiciansmuseum.org. It'll give our mission statement. Uh, also information on our induction ceremony on September 22nd. Will that lead them to you? Uh, that's our that's our website for the for the museum. Right. Now my how band's, do they get a hold my of band uh, Facebook is a George Howard band. George Howard band. And uh, we have a performance calendar and all my dates Great. are on the performance. You calendar. sing or play drums or both in that one? Uh, in my band, I, I just front the band, but I play drums and sing in my Zydeco band and sometimes a jazz trio. I'll do that. Okay. Or a three piece, but all right. But, well, uh, we'll we'll get some of the George Howard band up and playing today. Great. Thank right. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.
downtown get a bottle of gin So we can start this party again Running around with a bunch of good boys Shucking and jiving and making some noise Round midnight, you know my stomach cries Knock off the juice, Dad, give me something fried Give me 